Hi, I'm Kelly Holmes and I'm the National School Sports Champion. This edition of Get Physical looks at health and safety in secondary physical education. Delivering a curriculum which will challenge pupils to ensure their progress and keep them safe is a challenge in itself. Here are two schools that demonstrate how you can do that. Stop there. Okay, what must we not do when we change an end? Climb over there. Okay, why? Because it's dangerous. What could you do? Break the nets. What break, could you do? Break the nets, break bones. Okay, so can we make sure we walk round the edge of the net? Okay, thank you. Kerry Hamshaw, PE teacher at Royal Marsh Community School and Sports College in Rotherham, knows it's important to keep health and safety at the top of the agenda. By following clear but robust procedures, safety can be ensured without compromising exciting physical education lessons. I think some teachers think they need to take all the risks out of the activities that they do. It isn't taking it out, it's managing it. And things will always happen in a lesson that you may have not expected. That's life. Uh, and we all have to learn to be able to respond um, spontaneously as we go along. All right, something quite unsafe about this. Can anybody tell me what it is? There's a tennis ball on the court. OK, so what are we going to do about it then? Uh, remove it, make sure it's safe. Excellent, good idea. Kerry's working with a lower attaining group to ensure that they get a safe game of tennis, but also a sense of achievement through their game. They have adapted their positions on the court. I don't mind if you have to come up closer, OK, just make sure you get the serve in the right area and they are gripping their rackets higher than usual, so they have a better chance of hitting the ball. I'll be the umpire, I'll be scoring for you girls. Oh, hear that? Ow! Royal Marsh has a policy of engaging students in their own safety awareness and of starting them young. In primary what we've done is we've started at a very basic level and looked at how are uh, the stakeholders involved in their schools informed about health and safety and risk assessment. Um, so we look at what do the children understand about um, what they wear, how they should tie their hair back. They should have risk assessments for every activity uh, that we've put in place um, under the guidelines. But sometimes the basics need to be reinforced as Amanda Hawkridge discovered in this year seven gymnastics lesson. Before we start, there's a couple of people with jewellery on, so Vicky, earrings, Kira, hair tied back, Holly. We can't do gymnastics with any sort of earrings in, so how long do you have them pierced? I haven't done that weekend. Right, so you can't take them out yet. Okay, you're gonna have to be a coach then for today, Kira, so you can't join in practically. Focus on a spot on the floor, don't look anyone else, they'll make you fall over. And the key to teaching children to manage risk is having teachers who are competent in health and safety. Raw Marsh uses a number of initiatives for this. What muscles are we warming up? Um, here at uh, Raw Marsh Community School of Sports College, we make sure that we have um, an established programme or established uh, principle of pr safe practice within everything we do. We have a risk assessment officer in school as well as that. Um, we have uh, key people who are the experienced members of staff who will certainly give guidance and support to those members of staff who um, maybe need that little bit of development or a little bit of understanding um, in order to make sure that they assess risk and take steps to address that. Equipment, how do we carry it? Okay, we're going to pick it up. We are not going to drag it along the floor. Raw Marsh does encourage some external CPD, but within certain guidelines. The best CPD that we've done has been with individual teachers in their schools, with their classes, in their spaces, with their equipment. Um, uh, and then they really do learn uh, on, on the job, on their site, doing it in a separate place with a very gorgeous sports hall with some very super duper equipment is not realistic for them. Giving clear instructions and learning outcomes demonstrates strong lesson planning and therefore good anticipation of any risks that might arise. 
This is the kind of competent teaching that Rawmarsh encourages. OK, so we are finishing creating our sequence. We should have three balances in there. We should have a start and a finishing position. And Rawmarsh also promotes good understanding of health and safety by getting the students to act as teachers and teach it themselves. These Year 10 BTEC students are working for their Sports Leader Award with their teacher, Matt Boucher, supervising them. Today they are teaching a class from one of their feeder primary schools. The Year 10s have been asked to come up with their own lesson plans to help develop the primary children's sports skills. Go. One, one, two, three, three and a half, three and three quarters, four, four and a bit more, five, and start. Dum, dum. Health and safety is an important part of the award and the students have already learnt that good practice leads to safe practice. I just think you need to remember like safety things, like don't stand too close together when you're fielding. You're all quite good at dribbling, but I've seen you're all doing that. You need to hold it like that, or you might break your finger in. All you do is catch it, make sure your hands are open like that, palm, so you catch it easily, so you don't break your fingers, break your thumbs, everything like that. It's quite easy to get hit by a ball if you're not paying attention. You hurt yourself quite easily there. As part of the students' lesson planning, they have drawn up a risk assessment. This was a great tool for Perry. On the yard there's a fence around it and then there's two gates and I didn't realise that one of the gates was open so when someone kicked a ball through they went straight through the gate and I didn't think to close the gate before they went. On my next assessment I'll um, remember to just close the exits except for the fire exits. Key to good health and safety practice is ensuring that the complexity of the lesson is correct. If it's too demanding, it could lead to accidents, and if it's too boring, there's a risk of students misbehaving and getting hurt as a consequence. Following the STEPS principles is a way to establish a safe, purposeful working environment for all students. What STEPS provide is um, a way for teachers to differentiate um, lessons, to extend those that are really talented and to provide for those that are finding it very difficult. And what it stands for is space, so they always look at the space that they're in. Make sure we're not standing close, too close together, so we're not like diving into each other. We need somebody over here, so if they hit over here, somebody coming over here. They look at the task that they've set. When they drop it, you're going to try and get your front foot next to where the ball bounces. They look at the equipment that they're using and how many people are involved. I've made it small because we've got two games and we can't have six against six. Good. It's going to be too dangerous, so I thought it's playing hard. Excellent. Why don't you have two six against six? If someone gets injured, then you can't like see what's happening. Absolutely. Things. And the other S at the end, steps, is the success. Kids have to have success in order to feel that, um, to gain the self-esteem that they need through physical education. A combination of all these health and safety practices has yielded positive results. The number of serious incidents taking place in PE has dropped dramatically. I've been here seven years now, I've been teaching for longer and I have seen risk managed more effectively through uh, an increased awareness in relation to the safety of young people. But what if you're trying something out of the ordinary? When the county advisor suggested that Thorpe's in Andrews School in Norwich should offer out-of-hours scuba lessons to its students, it could have posed a problem. But in fact, exactly the same guiding principles apply as have been used in the PE lessons at Raw Marsh. Our approach to PE is to give pupils as broad an experience as possible, but within a safe environment. We want them to enjoy it, but obviously we want them to be safe when they're enjoying it. And the prospect of inviting another teacher or an adult supporting learning into the school alerted the health and safety coordinator. When they told me they were going to do scuba diving, all I said, 
make sure that you follow the guidelines and get an experienced person and all those sorts of things in place before you touch it. I mean, there's an element of risk in everything, um, but experts know how to cope. And there are ways of assessing that expertise. The head teacher should ensure that the adult supporting learning is CRB checked, has a level two qualification in his or her subject, and the lesson should be observed by a teacher to see that it is appropriate for the age group. The paperwork also needs to be checked. Yeah, we get them to sign a um, school document which actually states that they'll carry out a risk assessment. Also, they'll um, sign a Norfolk County Council um, application which also states on the back that they must carry out this risk assessment. This is Lewis's and Liam's first diving lesson. Their parents have filled in a stringent medical questionnaire. Well, yeah, I'm quite excited about doing scuba diving because I've never done it before. The button on the top lets the air out again. So just press that once. Nikki Ely is a professional association of diving instructors, master instructor, with excellent communication skills. She goes through the early preparations and ensures that the children have understood what she means by getting them to join in. Gaining the students' comprehension is an essential part of engaging them in their own risk management. You simply place it in your mouth, bite lightly on the mouthpiece, and then seal your lips around the mouthpiece itself. Diving is potentially a high-risk activity, as things can go badly wrong very quickly underwater. So great care is taken to ensure that the risks are controlled. And when we dive, we always dive in what we call buddy teams, so two people together. And this is in the unlikely event that the other person gets a little bit low on air, okay, they can then start using this regulator and using the air from your tank. And there is a particular safety concern about the use of the mask. Claustrophobia can be an issue with masks. Um, the way we check for this is when we um, give the children their masks, um, we get them to put them on and straight away you can tell whether someone likes it or not just by their facial expressions or if they tend to be taking a while over it, they might see their friends putting the masks on and that will then encourage them to do the same. Once underwater, a series of hand movements is used as a communication tool. And the first one we use is this one, which is the OK signal, which is a question and an answer. Are you OK? and you are OK, make sure you give us the OK signal back. Nikki's risk assessment ensures that control measures are ready to hand. At the site, in case an emergency does happen, we always make sure that we carry um, enough oxygen um, to provide the person with until the emergency services arrives. Um, all of our staff are first aid and oxygen qualified. Um, and we also always make sure that we're not too far away from a phone as well. Plus the small groups also helps us with control as well. And once everything has been checked for safety, it's time to play. My favourite bit was playing underwater frisbee. Playing underwater frisbee was my favourite bit as well. Practices at Royal Marsh and Thorpe St Andrew demonstrate the importance of clear and safe procedures in both traditional and adventure sports. The schools always do a risk assessment for every activity. Ensure staff have the necessary knowledge and experience of health and safety practice. And check students' understanding of safety concepts. Life is about managing risk. It's about being aware of it and knowing what your limits are and what you can actually work towards. And that is, I think, education in a nutshell.